people? Why are we taking so long to revise curriculums in universities, in schools? Because now it means that a lot of young people are missing out and there's a huge gap, market to, uh, skills to market gap. Secondly, there's a lot of uh, conversation around technology. So the future of work is heavily going to be reliant on technology. How are we leveraging this opportunity as Africa at this moment to make sure that our young people have skills to adapt to technology and use it as conduits to empower the other different sectors that they may require? So um, just to summarize that, I think the future of work is extremely diverse, and I think that's the first point, because if we look at just one person like Ben who's been able to impact with our little work, and then the 60% of the population of Africa who's young people, then we need to think around the solutions that we're creating for that. Thank you. Absolutely. That's a powerful story you've told. And thank you. It's inspiring to hear the work that you're doing um, to open the doors for young people. Speaking of youth and the future, Mr. President, if I may come back to you. As we look to the future, Africa holds incredible potential with its young workforce. And it, it's often said that one in four young people globally will be African. In your view, what should Africa prioritize over the next decade to position itself as a leading source of global talent? Yeah, um, from what you've just stated, uh, what is obvious is that we have the numbers. Indeed. Now, next is to work out the quality of those numbers. It's not just going to be numbers, it's also whether. So we have to invest in, uh, uh, in our uh, different systems that uh, the young people grow through. Uh, whether it is education, it is, uh, uh, but there's something we always forget at times. Uh, you provide education, you mind their health, you uh, call upon them to participate and even in their own growth as well as their country's growth. But there has to be that environment that actually allows everything to happen. I'll come back to the politics of everything. The politics that uh, allows the stability to prevail, and therefore within that, all kinds of things to be done that we are talking about. We have to build the infrastructure, therefore, on top of that, that serves uh, these young people. Uh, and then their task, which they always uh, are going to be good at, uh, will be entrepreneurship, as we have been told. It will be about innovation. It will be about uh, doing whatever business that uh, earns them a good living that everyone aspires uh, toward. So um, Africa has everything to be where we want to be, to be who we want to be. So we can only blame ourselves for not achieving that. And therefore to avoid the blame of blaming ourselves, that's why I started with saying the politics has got to be right and it has to provide the stability that therefore uh, creates that environment uh, where people can do what they are best at. Uh, we have seen it's no longer just the potential. People have been talking about the potential of our continent. No, we've just seen uh, how that potential to an extent has materialized to actually prove that everything is possible. So why not do more of what we've been doing to prove the case 
and, and make sure that more and more people benefit from being the best they can be and, from, and also benefit from uh, doing the very things that uh, we always talk about. Uh, and, and, and here I have to say we, we should also get tired of just saying the right things for so long. We want to see the right things happen and uh, resulting from, uh, uh, you know, I'm thankful that uh, in the program uh, we saw today, I, I was really happy when they didn't call me up to give a speech. Uh, I, I, I was, uh, not, not that I'm... Uh, I'm saying others shouldn't give speeches, <laughs> but I'm saying at a personal level, I have been on this stage saying so many things and uh, even repeating myself. And then I see uh, my brothers and sisters, colleagues, doing the same uh, over and over and over and over. It's, five years, it's 10 years, it's 20. But then we need to ask, even before anybody asks us, we need to ask ourselves, but what is uh, what to show for what we've been saying? Uh, we really need to get tired of it. I think uh, I can't emphasize it enough but uh, I think... Thank you, Mr. President. Yes. Um, I think... <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. It's clear that quality is crucial, and I hope that for the sake of our continent, quantity and quality will go hand in hand, and that there will be no repetition mm. after this Youth Connect Summit. Prime Minister, building on what Mr. President was sharing when we think about the future, now it's synonymous with technologies. How can African leaders leverage the rise of AI technologies and digital solutions to deliver inclusive and relevant skilling and employment opportunities for the young people? Thank you very much, Moderator. Um, I think our young people have got a lot of lot on their plate. Africa has got a lot of minerals and other things that they can bank on. Before they even go outside to the far world, we need to work 